Hi everyone, so I just wanted to give a quick intro to this annual review uh, slash planner spreadsheet. So basically there's three sheets in the spreadsheet. There's the annual review questions. There's the, uh, sorry, it's a bit slow. The long-term goals, which sort of come from the annual review. And then there's also the roadmap. So I'm gonna take you through each of these in turn really quickly. So the first sheet has annual review questions. You do this once a year. I usually do it at Christmas time. It usually, I mean, I think the first time I did it, it took me like probably two days. Now it takes me probably about a day in total. I usually do it in a few uh, sittings. Um, basically there's 190 or so questions in here if you want to do the whole thing. Uh, most of the questions come from Alex Vermeer. You can see the link up here. Uh, so I've sort of taken a lot of the questions from him. I've added a few of my own. The main difference is I've just put it in a spreadsheet um, so that it's easier to do, I think, and it's easier to compare year in, year out. Um, what I've done last year when I shared this, people said things like, oh, you know, it's a lot of questions. Um, it's, you know, I guess people thought it was very long. So I try to prioritize it. So if you want, you can reduce it. So one is the highest priority to second highest priority. So if let's say you only want to do a really short annual review, uh, these are just sort of separators. You can go down to priority one and then just do this. Um, what you'll see is that at the end, I've used some very complicated uh, sheets logic to basically pull everything out of the goals into this final sort of goals um, cell. So when you do your sort of assessment of the year and you think about what's changed and what you want to change next year and you set your goals, these should all um, be joined together basically in this cell. And you can copy that over then to here, to the next sheet, which is the uh, annual long-term goals sheet. So. The way that I use this is that at the end of my annual review, I have a lot of goals from the different areas. And maybe I should just quickly talk about those areas. So I'll just move back the sheet. So you can see I from here identified, I think, eight different areas. So contribution and impact, location and tangibles, money and finance. Um, so yeah, for each of those areas, you can kind of reflect on what's changed, sort of answer some of the prime questions, give it a rating out of seven, where seven is, you know, you're completely satisfied. So anyway, when you've done that, and then you get to the annual long-term goals um, that so you've generated, then you add these here. And you add a date when you log them, they'll all be active when you start, but let's say you complete them, then they might become inactive. Start date and end a review date. So, you know, when do you wanna have this goal sort of done or reviewed by um, an importance a level. Uh, so, you know, this could be one is the most important or three is the most important. Uh, an explanation for what the goal is uh, and then you know updates as you check it over the year so what i usually do with my goals is i set in my calendar once a month to check the sheet and i also you know periodically check it and it doesn't it's not like i suppose my day-to-day -day task list but it does kind of keep things in mind um so you know i had a goal for example to um you know learn how to surf better for example and i achieved that and it kind of kept me aware of that or had another goal to live by the sea and i ended up doing that in part because of um the sheet which you know kept it sailing into my mind so the final sheet then is a bit separate from the other two and what it's called is the roadmap and what it does is essentially it, it exists so that you have something to kind of figure out well where am i going in the next few years and you set your age here. So I, I update when I have um, last updated it in this cell. So then I have things like the age, my parents' age, location I plan to live in over that particular year. So just to explain how I do it anyway, um, I'm saying here is a 90%, 90% of the time I'll be in Sydney, 10% of the time I'll be traveling, 60% likely that that'll be the case. It's a 40% chance that I'll be in Sydney all of the time. So I use that to kind of break up different sets of options. Um, where will my home be? Who will I be working for? What will I be paid to do? How many hours of the week will I be paid to work? What other sort of unpaid work will I do? 
Um, I won't go into all of these, they're pretty explanatory. And you could add your own, but you know, you want to cover things like your finances, your savings. You want to cover maybe like your relationships, um, any sort of, you know, if you want to have children, any sort of things like that, that are maybe just significant to keep in mind. Uh, and I think that this is quite useful because as, at least in my case, um, I suppose living overseas, it was important for me to kind of think about just a whole range of things in conjunction when thinking about the future. You know, if you're going to buy a house, for example, or start a relationship or start a new job or any of these sort of things, you want to be thinking, well, like, where do I want to be? Am I sure I want to be here in five years time? Uh, and um, this kind of gives you a way of keeping account of all of these things and, and making a loose plan. So I hope that's useful. I probably won't have a huge amount of time to answer any specific questions about the spreadsheet until maybe next year. But next year, if there is a new version, which I hope there will be, then I will make further improvements and uh, share it with everyone.